Well, to talk more about the global wine industry, I'm joined by Edward Ragg. He is a master of wine and Chinese wine reviewer for the Robert Parker Wine Advocate. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. Well, Edward, what is the, the state of the global wine market overall? I mean, do you think it's bouncing back finally since the pandemic? And if so, why? what are the factors here? So traditionally, the global wine industry has had an, an excess of supply. So the challenge that producers have had in many parts of the world is how can they simply sell the, the excess volume? And the trouble in the European Union was sometimes you know, wine produced from uh, even quite well-known appellations would sometimes have to be distilled uh, because there was simply too much uh, produced. Now, that's changed a little bit according to what's happened with uh, global warming. If we think about the pandemic, the effects of that have been very regional. So I'm speaking to you from Beijing. Uh, we know here that there's been a zero tolerance to COVID. And so when you've had cities being affected by lockdown, uh, the sale of wine has been affected, particularly in, in restaurants and bars. If you look at other global markets like the UK uh, and the US, for example, uh, these are countries that have, in a sense, been able to bounce back from the pandemic, uh, certainly in the restaurant sector, and also had very different patterns of consumption. So in other words, people in China were not necessarily drinking a lot of wine when they were in lockdown, uh, because most people consume wine uh, in, in restaurants or social occasions. Um, however, in places like the UK and to some extent the US, People were drinking more at home, uh, and so consumption was not always affected. Sale of wine was still quite positive in some of these markets. Yeah, so the pandemic has affected different countries around the world differently, and so has climate change. As, as you mentioned, uh, we saw that package just now about how it's affecting um, a Belgian vineyard. Um, so what are you seeing in terms of, of the effects of climate change? We're seeing more erratic weather patterns around the world, and, and some countries are benefiting, others are, are, are losing out. Uh, what are you seeing, and, and how are winemakers having to adjust to these, these changes? Well, as you say, it very much depends where you are. Um, and so there are two elements to this, not just location, but also, of course, globally rising temperatures. And then the other element is, is erratic weather patterns. You know, just last year in Germany, in a very small region called the R, there were catastrophic floods, which was brutal to see, with very little warning, uh, which decimated uh, many people's wineries. You saw barrels floating in water, people's livelihoods sort of changed overnight. Um, if you look at, for example, the UK, there are some benefits to uh, rises in temperature. Now, you know, the English wine trade is, is uh, sorry, the English wine industry is very, very small, in fact, but sparkling wine has become important there and it's become easier to produce. You have a situation where producers in Champagne are looking a little bit enviously, maybe, at um, traditional methods, sparkling wine producers in England, because they have slightly better conditions now to ripen grapes for that style of wine. Uh, you know, in the previous segment, Bordeaux was talked about one way in which some uh, regions have adapted is to, to, to permit different grape varieties to be planted. Uh, now, the French are very proud uh, of uh, many of their grape varieties, but now in Bordeaux, it's possible to grow grapes like Tariga Nacional, uh, which is a grape from Portugal, which I think is quite a smart move for adjusting to climate change. So it really depends uh, where you are. If you look at a country like Australia, Australia has a long track record of dealing with drought, in fact, and adjusting to different climate conditions. So they have quite advanced research on how to cope with drought conditions, salty conditions, uh, warmer conditions. Uh, and so different producers, different regions, different companies are responding to this differently. And of course, the, 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 the word of, of the year or the word of our time is sustainability. So in other words, how are people going to have a wine industry and what sort of wine industry will it be in future? That's what everyone's thinking about. And Edward, um, how is this going to affect um, what consumers see on the shelves? I mean, are, are prices going to go up? Are they going to go down? Or is this another thing where it depends on where you are? It does depend on where you are. Um, prices might go up, for example, where a wine is in high demand. Um, a couple of years ago, there was actually a shortage of rosé from the south of France, not just from Provence, which is arguably the most famous uh, region for premium rosé. But rosé has been a category, uh, by rosé I mean pink wine, of course, that has been growing for, for years. Through our, our century, it's just grown you know, exponentially. So there's huge demand for pink wine, and sometimes pink wine from certain regions.
questions. If there was a dearth of Provence rosé, you would see the prices of those wines go up in particular. In other cases, you know, price is not always stimulated by a lack of uh, a particular wine, because if the wine obviously is not in demand, uh, you know, having less production is actually a problem for the producer, it's not a problem for the consumer. So of course it's very regional and it's very wine uh, category specific as well. Edward Ragg, thank you so much uh, for joining us and giving us so much great insight there. My pleasure, thank you.